Today we are going to be looking at the impact of dams on river processes. Now this is a very common question that gets asked in the Leaving Cert exam. So we may as well cover it and see how we're going to get on. Now most of you will probably do the river section and so you're going to have to learn the impact or a human impact on river processes and the most common we look at is going to be dams. Let's get into it. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe because that's how things work really. There's a picture of a dam. I thought it was quite interesting. I don't know what dam it is. It was the nicest one I could find. And I said, well, it's vivid imagery. That's kind of important. Basically, look, at a dam is three impacts on river processes, deposition, transportation, and erosion. Spoiler, they're the three processes that rivers have anyway. Um, we're going to look at all three of them, not necessarily in that order, but each of them are going to be a little bit different. So as we go through, we're going to kind of do it this way. It's going to be the dam, it's going to be the impact it has on river processes, and then there's going to be the wider impact that that has um, on that. The first one I'm going to look at with you is river transportation. Um, I like to think that uh, this one is probably the most straightforward one. Why? Well, a dam is a wall. And if you're trying to transport something and you meet a wall, you can no longer transport that thing. You can't go around it, you can't go over it, it's a dam. You, you just got, you have to stop. So how does a dam impact on river transportation? It stops it, Most, mostly. There, there's some exceptions, there's always exceptions. That's what makes learning fun. Um, it's quite straightforward. Sediment gets trapped behind the dam and uh, it builds up behind the wall of the dam. In the little picture that I've put in, the brown color at the front, that is the reservoir behind the dam that is filled with sediment. And that's why it has the brown color. It gives it a dirty color because it's full of sediment because it's getting trapped. Um, not a lot we can do about that. Well, mainly. Um, the exception to it is that the finer sediment still escapes the dam through the gates. So on the dam, you're going to have anywhere between 2 and 22 gates that help control the flow of the water. And the finer sediments, so the smaller sediments, the silt can get out through that as well. Basically, what that means is your traction and your saltation are going to stop downstream because the bigger boulders, the bigger rocks, the bigger material, they can't get through. It's just the way it works. And so your traction saltation stops. Suspension solution keeps going. That's river transportation. Let's look then at river deposition. Well, very straightforward. Why does a river deposit? Um, because it runs out of energy. And it does that in four scenarios. So firstly, when it has too much material, when there's too little water, when it reaches flat ground, or when it flows into the sea. Um, the picture of the cat is unrelated. I just thought it looked quite funny. And these things are supposed to be engaging. So there you go. Um, you can talk about words like discharge, velocity. They're nice words. Um, you could also talk about how to tie your shoelace. Both would be equally useful as long as you're explaining the reason it runs out of energy, you're going to be fine. Fancy words. They're nice, but not the be all and end all. Um, so what happens is the dams are usually built in the youthful stage or the upper stage, depending on how fancy your teacher was with you. I like to say the youthful stage. Um, deposition doesn't normally occur here, it's right straightforward, um, but the dams are going to cause your deposition to occur in a youthful stage, and it happens when the river flows into the reservoir. Spoiler alert, a reservoir is a lake, and so when a river flows into a lake or a reservoir, it loses its energy, and that's why it deposits, and that's why you get so much deposition behind a dam. Um, it also reduces the amount of deposition that occurs in the old stage, because if all of your material is getting trapped behind the dam, or most of your material, certainly the bigger stuff, you then have less material to deposit when you go downstream in the old stage or the lower stage, whatever again, whatever, whatever your teacher calls it. It doesn't really matter. They all mean the same thing. Um, and this results in the features deposition no longer being formed in the old stage. And that's bad. Why is that bad? Well, a number of reasons. It's uh, impacts the natural course of a river. That's a really nice thing to put into an essay because it sounds fancy. 
Um, it also impacts photographers who like to take photos of meanders and oxbow lakes and floodplains and deltas and all the other nice things that happen down there. So we need to think of the poor photographers. Uh, river erosion then. So erosion happens because you get a sudden release of water from the dam and that causes erosion to happen in the mature and old stages or the middle and lower stages. Again, it doesn't really matter what you call it. They all mean the same thing. Um, just get the stages right. And um, well, it's mainly through hydraulic action, which, as you know, is going to be the force of moving water. Make sure to put that in because you get marks for explaining what these processes actually mean. Uh, vertical erosion, which means downwards. For you, as you do, that don't know what vertical means, it means downwards. Uh, deepens the riverbed in the lower stages. Not a good thing. I'm going to explain why. But I'm going to explain why by using an example. Because it's always good to use examples in geography because it means that you're relating what you learned in your book to the real world. Um, now, you could pick any dam. Your teacher will have picked the dam for you and you'll have talked about that. The one I like to pick is the Three Gorges Dam. If that's not the one you picked, um, I mean, there's no reason you can't talk about it. It's, you know, the impacts are generally the same thing. So what impact then has the Three Gorges Dam had on river processes? Dalton will be explained later. Um, so the release of the water is irregular because they open and close gates at different times. They have a different amount of gates open at different times. The amount of water that comes out is going to be different. This can at times then cause excess levels of hydraulic action and the vertical erosion that we talked about um, a couple of seconds ago. So sometimes you can have too much. Sometimes you don't really have much because they don't release too much water. Bringing it all together then, and when I talked about the impact of the vertical erosion and then the lack of sediment downstream, that results in a lower level in the river. So if your river channel is getting deeper, you have less amount of sediment that builds up your river channel. You then get what's called an entrenched river channel. And that's bad because when you get really heavy rain, because the river is so low down, it can't flood. So it doesn't spread out, which you're thinking, yeah, great. We, nobody's been flooded. Nobody's been washed out of their houses. Great. Humanity is safe. But uh, also no, because floodplains bring us a lot of benefits, such as we can grow crops on them cheaply because they're fertile. And if farmers can't grow crops on them, then it's really bad because they've got to buy chemical fertilizer. Other impacts of the entrenched river channel include exposing the riverbed to vertical erosion because it's not, not safe from, from the water anymore because there's no barrier in its way. Um, and lateral erosion, that can happen as well sometimes. And that leads to landslides. I think there's been 90 landslides along the Yangtze River because of the dam or since the dam has been built because the riverbanks have been undercut. And well, there's the thing about the farmers again. The lack of alluvium for floodplains means farmers must purchase expensive fertilizers. Um, this is where you all go, oh, or some similar sound like that. I don't really mind. Um, there's also a destruction of the delta due to lack of sediment. So delta, as I'm sure you know, is a feature of river deposition that comes at the end when the river flows into the sea and deposits its material. And that's bad in China because it's led to the wipeout of the White River Dolphin. So that dolphin on the right hand side that you've all been looking at for the past 30 whatever seconds, um, that's impacted there. They don't exist in China anymore because of the dam. Ooh. Um, that's basically it, right? Now we could go on and we could talk about all these other fancy things and the other impacts they have. The question is asking you very straightforwardly, tell me about the impacts of the dam has on the processes of the river. So you need to focus your answer in on those processes. You can talk about the other things, but loss of marine life and that's all the sad stories and all that thing. It's not relevant. There's no, I mean, you can put them in. You're not going to get the marks from them because it's not relevant. You're always trying to answer the question. As I said, this is a lovely question. It's a common question. It comes up very regularly. If you get it, pick it, answer it. You should be fine. Um, if this was in any ways useful to you, 
um don't forget to subscribe because it does help a little bit um my ego anyway whatever with anything else um but it does help the channel grow and yeah happy studying <laughs>